Hello, and welcome to Storytime Reddit. Today, we're starting something new from r slash surviving infidelity. You may have seen parts of this story elsewhere, but never the complete saga of the cheating co-writer. This epic tale of infidelity begins with an old co-writer colleague reappearing into the lives of OP and his wife. It has grown to over seven updated postings, multiple updates and edits to each post, and OP adding details in the comments that have not been covered elsewhere. I've put it all together and we'll be releasing it in order with the link to the next installment at the end and in the description of each video. And now, part one of the cheating co-writer saga. My 44-year-old male wife, 41-year-old female, was recently contacted by her ex-boyfriend slash co-writer, 36-year-old male, and I've grown a bit nervous. Hello everyone. Let me first start by saying that my wife and I are very open, maybe way too open about our past and past partners and all that. She is my second wife. My first wife was big on fidelity and we broke up over her cheating. The ex and I share a son. My wife also has a daughter of her own from a previous marriage. We've been married for five years and our little blended family works well together. As I mentioned earlier, we are perhaps too open about our past relationships. Her first husband was a serial cheater. He was a musician and slept around with women from his gigs. She stumbled upon his emails only to learn that he was involved with five other women, one of which he'd gotten pregnant. Not wanting their child to grow up in a broken home, she wanted to save the relationship and reached out to one of her old internet friends for advice. We'll call him Chris. The two had been friends for over seven years up until that point, but had never met. They were writing partners. In fact, before they lost contact, they had been writing a novel together. She tells me that when she reached out for support, he was very kind and had actually been recommending a lot of ways to get past infidelity or what you should speak to attorneys about, in general being a good friend. Somewhere in that, they decided to revisit writing their book again. According to her, they would casually flirt, but as they lived on opposite sides of the country, they had no means to act. In all that, she decided her marriage was dead and stopped trying to fix things. Checked out, I guess. She and Chris expressed mutual attraction, and by the end of the year, he flew out to meet her. She filed for divorce right after the affair got physical, and Chris moved later that year to be with her. To make a long story short, her daughter, who was only five at the time, didn't really take to him. As she says, he didn't do anything wrong, she just wasn't adjusting properly after the divorce and didn't like somebody replacing her father. My wife told him they needed to take a break due to this, and to the fact that he's a bit of crass sometimes. She had only intended for it to be a short break, but he was apparently so hurt that he'd moved that far to be turned away two months in, and so he broke it off entirely. After months had gone by, they reconnected to try and finish their book. They began sleeping together again during this time, but it was just a physical thing. They came close to finishing the book, but she started dating me. Thus, they stopped sleeping together. She felt weird about having an ex hanging around when she got in a committed relationship, and so by her own admission, she stopped returning his emails, which were all book-related, with the same frequency and stopped working on it on her end so much. He grew frustrated after a few months on this and blocked her on everything. Which finally brings us to a month ago. After four or five years of no contact, he messages her out of the blue. He contracted the vid and nearly died. Chris contacted her because apparently in that time apart, he rewrote the book without her contributions, managed to get published, wrote and published a sequel, and released his work, came really close to not being finished if he died. He wanted to make it known that if something should happen to him, that he wanted the rights of this thing turned over to her as she knows how it will end and help create the story. Fair enough. That actually sounds nice. But then they get to talking. He's apparently writing a comic adaptation, and he invited her to come on board for it. He has a lot of the art done, and she was very excited showing me and explaining to me who all the characters were, their backstories, what she thinks he got wrong in the design. She also read the first book and is telling me which names he changed what characters were and weren't in their version, the plot differences, and she seems to be having a lot of fun with it. I knew they wrote together, she's mentioned it before, but I had no idea they had this whole universe created. I can tell it was something that was really important to her. She seems like she might take him up on the offer, and this worries me. Every time they've worked on something in the past, it leads to sex. And there is a bit of sexual content in their writing. I'm not the jealous type, and I certainly don't want to step on a dream she had buried, but I don't want a repeat of history. I'll admit, I decided to snoop their conversation, and while he seems like he's been on the level and is only really discussing the project, she's pressing for information on his personal life. I wouldn't say in a flirty way, but she asked him if he's seeing anyone now, and when he answered no, he's too busy, that relationships just get in the way, she told him he needs to get back out there. 
that celibacy isn't a good look on him. We're pretty open about our past sex life, so I know her ex-husband was terrible at it. And once when drunk, she said of Chris, don't let a great F convince you it'll be a great relationship. How the hell do I proceed? I know she was emotionally broken by her ex-husband, and that's why she cheated. But she did cheat with this man. I've met him. He seems like an on-the-level guy. But they have a history that tells me something might happen. I want to approach my wife with my concerns, but I don't want to seem like an overbearing, controlling person. I want her to have her creative outlet, because she glows in a way I've never seen before when she talks about this book. I barely knew anything about. It feels like it's something that was deeply important to her that she forced not to be important. I want that for her, but I don't want their interactions to escalate into something more like they have three times already. I would say a very acceptable boundary to draw is, I'm not okay with you making a book with the guy you left your last husband for. OP. Context though, her ex-husband cheated and the relationship was a walking corpse for the last six months of it. Chris showing up in the last month. Because of my ex-wife, I really don't like cheaters in general, but it's fairly easy to rationalize why she did it. Doesn't bring much comfort, though, when it's literally the same guy. Creating a book together involves a very close professional relationship. Sure, she can say that it's totally over between him and her, but the issue is, are you going to be 100% okay with that? Do you feel like you're going to worry about their frequent messages and if their relationship is staying professional? If you guys have a fight, are you going to be upset if she goes and works on their book together? There's a lot of messy factors going to be involved in this. If you have an issue with it, that's okay. This isn't just some guy she used to be writing partners with. It's a guy she had an intense and sexual relationship with. Once you cross a line with someone, sometimes you can't walk it back. You and her have to realize that collaborating with an ex-partner is a big ask. And if she didn't think to ask if you're okay with it first, that's a bit scary. OP. I mean, add to that the fact that some of the writing is pretty sexual. One thing I plan to say is that I'm really, really not comfortable with her writing sex scenes with somebody she had sex with. She hasn't agreed to work with him on it, she just seems excited to see the project actually released. She's even slightly mad at him for doing it, seeing as she thought they agreed to abandon it. I've never wronged her in a serious way. Her ex-husband kind of knew that she was cheating, but as he was basically unemployed and might have difficulty staying in the country were they to divorce, and had been cheating on her, he just let it go. She's had one night where she spent a couple hours chatting with Chris, but since then, things have been normal. She explained the situation with her ex-husband that she talked with Chris for several hours a night, every night, and ex-husband, for self-preservation, didn't confront her over it. She starts behaving in that way, I'll be worried, but that hasn't been the case. You tell her that you are not okay with her having contact with her former affair partner and that it will be the end of the family if she proceeds. You should not have to sit there and watch and worry and wonder what is going on between them. It is totally antithetical to any reasonable concept of marriage. OP. I think that's a little unfair to be honest. I think with clear boundaries and the fact we don't live anywhere near him, it's safe to say nothing will happen. When he messaged her, she came straight to me and let me read his initial message, and there wasn't any trace of him trying to be seedy. The contents were him apologizing for ghosting her four to five years ago, mentioning that he finished two books in their trilogy, that he nearly died, and it made him realize he wanted the story to go to her in the event he died because rightfully 50% should be hers anyway. His message included a whole bunch of anime commissioned art of their characters and was asking if she'd be interested in helping him write the adaptation into a graphic novel. She won't work with him without my say-so. And if it's just that, and they are a country apart, I'm not really too worried anymore that stuff will happen. That is where you are wrong. Affairs don't only happen on a physical level, they also happen on an emotional level. Please be aware of that. OP. I'm aware. That's why I was keeping an eye on it via email. And now for the second post. Update. My wife was recently contacted by her ex-boyfriend slash co-writer, and I've grown a bit nervous. My wife's ex-boyfriend re-emerged in her life asking to work on a mutual writing project that she abandoned years ago that he's achieving financial success with now. I don't know who this woman is. The level of deception is so involved and deliberate that I'm hardly capable of comprehending that I've spent the last six years of my life with this person. I decided to sit down with her and talk about how I felt about the situation, that I was happy she rediscovered her old writing and expressed that it would be cool for her to explore that as a hobby or a profession as she's quite good at it and clearly enjoys it. At the time, she agreed and said that Chris, her ex being around, wouldn't be a good thing, saying she was worried that he might be using this as a ploy to talk with her again. When she said these things, I was like, okay, cool. 
She has the same misgivings I do, and she's not minimizing my feelings or calling me controlling. In fact, we're on the same page. Oh, how wrong I was. That conversation should have been the end of it. But for some reason, my brain started getting weird, and I began thinking it was going too well. Yesterday morning, when she got in the shower, I took her phone and went into it. His number was there, and their entire conversation had been deleted. It hadn't been three days prior. Red flags. Checked Facebook Messenger, she's talking about her upcoming trip for work, which takes her to Vegas. Well, apparently this two-day-long thing has been cancelled due to the vid, but she's been telling me she's going. They are discussing a hotel, a town over, and staying there as well as sending each other people's vacation photos of Vegas, so she'll have stuff to show if I ask. She's talking about restaurants they can go to, how there will be a full moon when he's here, and it would look great on the beach. Oh yeah. And he's not on the East Coast as he presented. He moved back to town recently since the Rick actually has enough money to live here. He showed her on Google Maps where he's living and it's taking everything I have not to drive my truck straight into his living room. A month ago, she claimed that she had to pick up her brother from the airport. Nope, that was him. The messages don't go back much further than that, but they reference talking about stuff during the years they supposedly haven't had contact. One line I read that he wrote has my heart racing with such effing madness is from him. Yeah, we're just friends. I don't see you in eight years and I'm inside you in 20 minutes off the plane. Best friends, maybe. So she's not just planning to F him. She's been doing it for months. That trip to her mother's a few weeks back where she stayed the night? Yeah. I haven't confronted her yet, but her smile fills me with so much hate now. I'm going to try my best and hold back on saying anything until after Christmas. The kids don't need the holiday being a constant reminder of this, but honestly, I'm probably going to snap and confront her today or tomorrow because my ability to swallow this BS with a smile is almost impossible. Honestly, I'll be lucky if I can avoid taking a bath with the toaster. I'm losing my mind right now. And now, an update to the second post. I'd like to thank everyone who offered advice when I first posted this yesterday. It helped keep my mind away from darker places, and it gave my hands something to do. I've been talking with my brother for support and have continued to monitor their communications. She noticed me acting different and I told her it was just me having the blues over the anniversary of my aunt's death, which was enough so she didn't start realizing I know all I know. I spent three hours today in my car outside of McDonald's using their Wi-Fi to access her emails and they're using effing Yahoo Messenger to communicate. She's on this with her tits out in a ton of pics, all of which I'm saving. Real cute, there's one with her posed with flowers I got her for her birthday. They've been sexting since, like, March. Some select quotes from her. I can't just start talking about the book all the time. I talked about you twice when he and I got together. If I started talking about you and the book a lot now, he's going to think something is up. You need to shave because that stubble is like knives. Almost had to put chapstick on my chin and under my nose. From him. You're getting it right before you leave here. I want him to kiss you after you spent the afternoon swallowing me. Honestly, my compulsion not to beat this man to death is strong. I won't do it, but the fact that he's so, like, purposefully vicious is making me want to wear his teeth as a necklace. Edit 1. I'm gathering info pics and screenshots of her location and speaking with a lawyer tomorrow. Edit 2. I've met with my brother's divorce attorney and we're making plans. I am documenting everything. All texts, her location, when she's claiming to go. I'm confronting her on the second next month after she goes to the hotel with him. I'm making sure I have my ducks in a row, and I'm trying not to ruin Christmas forever for the kids. Edit 3. The wave of suicidal thoughts have passed, and I think everyone who left kind messages for me really got me over the hump. When I first read your post, I instantly thought, her precious relationship story is full of shit, and she's probably the serial cheat. Glad my gut is always right. Their relationship didn't work out because he didn't want to play daddy to her child. That's why she's stringing you along. I'm sorry and finish her in the courtroom. OP. Her daughter has a mean streak. I know how to deal with it because I've got my own, but in his words, I didn't get this far and live this long for a six-year-old to tell me what I'm doing with my day. And because of this, he won't take her on full time, and I don't want her. So enjoy the gutter, woman. And what about her biological father? Do you have any contact with her ex? Because I truly believe she demonized her ex to look good because that's the tactic a lot of serial cheats do. I don't believe he was the cheater she painted him out to be. Maybe compare stories and use him as a character witness? Because she will go nuclear when you lawyer up. All cheats do. OP. He is a cheater, 
They got into a huge fight around her daughter's birthday because he casually joked about cheating on her, and I heard it from his mouth. It's not a case of either or. They're both just piles of shit. Just remember, the courts are highly biased against men. I've worked in law offices that handled divorces, and I can say that it's certain there is a strong bias. You can't afford to lose your temper. At all. Because anything you say in anger is going to sound a million times worse than what she has done. Keep a level head. Play the long game. OP. I'm not the screaming, raging type, and I'm recording everything. As I'm hyper-aware of myself in front of cameras, I'll be more cordial than normal, not giving her the chance to villainize me. Brother, once a cheater, always a cheater. If you check with her ex-husband, this woman lied from the time you guys got together. You need to go scorched earth and let everyone know. She is the worst of the worst. Get tested for STDs ASAP. Any way you can, burn her world down, do it. She married you with bad intention, which makes her your enemy. Good luck. OP. She's done, my friend. She will regret ever meeting me before this is over. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I hope you'll come again soon. Bye for now.